So I was over here opening up the uh, goblin special key thing that we got, because I ended up having four of them from logging in. Uh, I think during a special, special event or campaign or something. And I got this sword. I was like, whoa! Gotta record that. I got a Delta Earring, an Air Raider, and a Coma, or however you pronounce that. But this sword, it's a level 99 sword. Like I said, we can get some amazing things. Item level is 119, and it's pretty nice. I don't know if I'll use this for Paladin, but for Dark Knight it seems pretty good. And from what I remember, Runefencer uses uh, great swords, so... Yeah, that'll be interesting. I'm out here in La Hien, uh Plateau. I'm trying to kill the other um, notorious monster battering ram for the, the second horn that I need for the purple belt quest. So I'll be out here for a little bit. Um, I will let you know when I find the NM that drops the uh, horn that I need. I don't know how long it'll take, hopefully not very long, but it's a lottery spawn, so you have to kill one of the, I, I think one of the two, um, battering rams, I just killed the one, there should be another one here somewhere. There it is. So, kill both of these, I think they have 10 minute respawn, if I'm not mistaken, and I shall see you in what will be a couple seconds for you guys. So, after about, probably 30, 40 minutes... We only killed the spawns, I think, two or three times. We ended up getting the weaker version to spawn, which is Lumbering Lambert. He's like, I think, level 15 to 18, and then the stronger one, I forget what his name is. But he's like level 51 to 54 or something. But, yeah. It's a 100% chance to drop the horn that we need. So now, we can go and turn in the, uh, the Lumbering Horn, and I think the other one is Rampaging Horn. And we can get the purple belt, which will be a very nice upgrade from the white belt. Alright, so we are over here in Best Oak Markets at H8 in the Goldsmith Skill. So we are going to buy a couple stacks of Sink Ore, or whatever we can buy. So we'll buy 12. So if I'm not mistaken, you need 23 Zinc Ore, I think? or sorry, 72 Zinc Ore, in order to get from rank 1 to rank 9 in the Tenshido thing. So, we bought, what, 6 stacks so far? That's 72. And then I think you need one for the pre-quest, which is where you only need one of them to trade. After the pre-quest is complete, then you can trade four of them at once, and, uh... I need to get to at least two Tenshido reputation in order to get the purple belt quest and complete it. So I will see you in one second once we find out where the person is we have to trade all the zinc ore to. So we are over in Best uh, Port Bastok in the warehouse 2. Um, I can tell you the position in a second. We got a cutscene with this Talib guy, or Talib or however you pronounce it. And then Cornelia will come in, she'll ask for a chunk of zinc ore, which is the one that you need for the pre-quest. The position for Talib is F6. So then you just trade the zinc ore, one piece of zinc ore, not, not a whole stack or anything like that. So you trade this one piece, and then it should complete the quest. Or maybe not. Take these to Aragua, the villa, uh, okay, so we have to go and turn these into the dude that I don't know where he is. One second. Alright, so we are in Bastok Mines. Over there is the, uh, Zurin Mines. So if you come this way, you go down the stairs. First door on the left here, after you come down the ramp. And you go into this next room, and this will be the guy you have to give the key item to that we just got. And that's the uh, Papara Mine Logs or whatever. They'll give you a bronze knife, which will finish the Galka and her beauty, I think is the quest called. One second. Yeah, beauty and the Galka. 
now we can go back to the dude over in Port Bastoke and start trading him four zinc ore each time. And after you trade 72 of them, four at a time, you should be rank 9 in Tenshido Reputation. Then you should be able to do any Tenshido quests as long as it's just Tenshido Reputation. So I'll see you in a second once we complete all the uh, tradings and we start the uh, purple belt quest. Alright, so once you've turned in the six stacks uh, to, to leave over there, Come over to this guy, and he will give you a quest for the purple belt. Oh, for some reason it doesn't want to do it. Um, up here, right here is when I talk to him. It says, say you look like a seasoned adventurer, what say you on taking on a Tenshido job for a change? If you succeed, I will give you a purple belt. Only veteran monks may use it. But even if you aren't one, you could still sell it for a heap of gold. I only ask you bring me a leap. A uh, lumbering uh, horn and a rampaging horn for it. So, we got those from killing the notorious monsters in Lothian Plateau and in Konstant Highlands. So trade him those. And you got a purple belt. There we go. And now we can look at the purple belt. So, our white belt was one strength, but we can use that level one. Purple belt is a lot better. 2 defense, 3 strength, and 4% haste. But you only have to be at level 18. So if Monk is not your first uh, character job, then uh, you could probably buy this. I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's like an 80 to 100k on the Grand Exchange. Or the Auction House. Sorry, I mixed in a couple games together. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice belt. Then there's the Black Belt and the Brown Belt. I think the Black Belt's level 70, if I'm not mistaken. But it gives 12% haste, and then the brown belt is level 40 and gives 8% haste. So they're very nice. But I think there's a quest for both of those. But we'll get to those when we get when we get higher. Anyway, I'll uh, see you in a second. Alright, so we're gonna come over here to Kooftail Tunnel. It's uh north end of Western Altapa Desert. Right up here. Where our little blinky thing is at. And you go into this area, there's a cave. You just go down and follow it. I'm on a choke bow because I went to Rebeo. Just grab the crystal and the survival book. So I just go in here. Ta-da! We are in Kooftail Tunnel, yay! There should be a book right here, I believe. Yep, right here. Ground Tome. There's also a survival book to the right. So cancel the previous page we had on, because it's from a different area. I think it's page one. Yeah, three robber crabs and three sand lizards. I'm not gonna attack them right away, but I wanna see what they read. Very tough. Uh, yeah, very tough, incredibly tough at 56. That's not bad. Should easily be doable with the right uh, setup. So, this is where I'll be training till 60, and I will see you guys once we hit level 60. Alright, we are level 60, and we are capped on experience, so now we can go and do the limit break whenever we get the, um, the rank from the missions for Past Oak, so that we can start the Magicite quest. And then after that, we can go ahead and continue our limit break. So, yeah. See you guys in a little bit. Alright, we are over here to talk to Iron Eater. And it, I think we have to talk to him twice for the quest. Yeah, there's one for the initiative for the trust quest. Which we don't need to worry about right now. I don't know what option I just picked, but apparently it was the right one. Bye, Cornelia! Oh, hi, Najee. What's up? You were supposed to stop her. Oh, look, it's a yummy. 
No talking back to your senior musketeers. Anyway, the, uh, this cutscene's pretty much going to tell us we gotta go to Bado, the uh, Kedav outpost, and we have to kill 20 uh, copper Kedavs, I believe. Well, that's what the next cutscene will tell us, is we have to kill 20 of them. This one's pretty much telling us we have to go there and we have to kill some Kedavs. Doesn't tell us how many we have to kill until we get there. But anyway, I'll see you in a second. I just teleported into Bado. And we're getting a cutscene telling us we have to go kill some copper Kedavs. Oh, this, this will just be a second. I think they tell you that you have to kill 20 of them each. Yeah. Must eliminate 20 of them each. So, roughly, that's about 100 Kedavs that we have to kill. So, don't forget to grab the book on your way in. Entrance is right there. The book's right here, right before this goblin. Uh, who trades Dynamis Currency. So you just kill these ones right here. They should be, I think, level 26 or so. 26 to 28, I, I think. There's quite a lot of them. But, yeah, I'll slaughter these, and I'll see you once we get all the 20 of them killed. And uh, we get ready to leave. Alright, we killed the 20 Kata, copper Kedavs that we needed to kill. We're going to zone out real quick. We should get a cutscene telling them to... Uh, telling them that we are done with the Kedav killing. If not, then we'll get a cutscene that is different. Should be once you zone into Pashau. Yep, looks like I'm getting a cutscene. Good, you've all done well. We seem to be missing Naji. Why is he always like this? <laughs> He's just like, I killed more. Yeah. Anyway, that should be the end of that mission, I believe. Let me check real quick. Uh, yep. Now we can start the next mission, which is the uh, rank 3-3, I believe it's called. Which is called Juno. And we have to go and save somebody from the Juno... Uh, place, I forget exactly where, and that'll give us rank 4, so let's go and start that. We are back over here to Rashid, I think is how you pronounce his name, the dude who gives us the Bastok missions. We will be accepting the quest or mission uh, called Juno. We have to get the, um, we have to save Sir Lucas, I think? Mm, I don't know. But, we have to go to Juno, I'm pretty sure, so I'll see you in one sec. So I was kind of mistaken on where we had to go. We have to talk to Sir Lucas in the President's office. President's office, I think it, I think it was. So we have to click on this. Uh, nope. Maybe it's in here. Uh, nope. Stay in here. Where are you, Sir Lucas? Maybe we talk to Iron Eater. No, not that quest. Huh. Weird. Maybe I'm mistaken. I know it said, like, Presence 8 or something. Juno Consulate. Windurstian Consulate. Ah, over here. Aid's office. Just to the north, or just to the east of the crystal. I don't know how I missed that. So you run behind this Hans person. And you talk to Sir Lucas right here, the one examining books. That's not the quest that it should have triggered. There we go. So if you get a, a dialogue that talks about the trust permit or whatever, that's not the one that you need. You can talk to him a second time, he'll give you a letter to the ambassador. Now we have to go to Rulud Gardens, and we have to talk to somebody there, which I think his name was Goggin or something. G-O-G-G-E-H-N, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll see you guys in one second, once I find out where he is. Alright, so I found out where this Goggin dude is. 
So here's the crystal right outside the uh, Palace of Juno or whatever that's called. Where you would go to talk to Matt to do the limit break quest. Come down these stairs and keep going pretty much straight past the fountain. Go into the Bastokian Embassy. There should be... There he is. Let's talk to him and you'll get another cutscene. And I think after this you have to go and enter Delphuke's Tower. Or Delphuk... Delphuts? I don't know how to pronounce that. I think it's Delphuke's Tower. But anyway, I'll see you in one second once this cutscene is over. So, if this is your first time entering Delphute's Tower, um, you'll get a cutscene for, I think it's Chains of Promethea? Yep. And then, uh, yeah, you just gotta watch the cutscene. So, unfortunately, they have not made any way for you to skip it, but it is a pretty interesting cutscene nonetheless. So, I'm just gonna skip over this for you. We made our way over to this teleporter on the third floor. We came up the stairs from the second floor down here, went around the north and hugged the wall around there, and we got to the teleporter up here at uh, G6. So we're gonna go through the teleporter real quick. This should bring us to the fourth floor, which should be at middle Delphuke's Tower. Del Delphuke's Tower. It's a weird pronunciation of it. And then we are on the fourth floor now. So we have to make our way along this path going south and then around the east on the southern wall. Then we have to pass around the left and then come around the right. So then we make our way up here. So there's like three or four uh, blockades that will stop you from going the shorter distance. So I'll see you guys once we make it to the stairs on the northeast corner. Alright, we are up here on the fifth floor. On the northeast corner are the stairs that we came up. Obviously it says down air on them because that would bring us back to the fourth floor. We have to go all the way to this middle path that looks like it goes up. We have to go the west path around south and then to here. Because if you go the southeast corner path, there's a dead end there that will stop you. So then you would have to run all the way back anyway. So I'll see you once we get to the, the little pathway in the middle there. Alright, so we have to make our way to the southeast corner where the teleport is. Um, also, once you get to this little pathway here, I'll show you what I mean. This little pathway right here, once you zone up, well technically right before, there's a grounds tome here, you can get circumspection. Um, so that you can get Sneak and Invis if you need it. Um, I don't remember what these guys read, but I'm pretty sure they're close to like 40, 45, somewhere on there. So, if they read Easy Prey or higher to you, they might aggro you. But anyway, um, if you're careful, you don't need it, but best bet's just to grab it if they're reading anything above too weak. And you make your way over to this teleporter, and teleport to the next floor. So this, this is a shorter floor, so it's not that bad. Let's go into here, and it'll teleport you. You lose your invis when you go on this thing, by the way, so just be careful of that. Now we should be on the 7th floor, and I think it's the northeast corner. 
should be up there. And then just run up there and you should be fine. Sorry, I think it's actually northwest. My bad. Let's go northwest. Yeah, it's the staircase. Not the teleporter, it's just a staircase. So, we just run up here. Pedal Master. Rawr. I think the reason why most of these guys, well, technically all these guys are not aggroing me or even close to easy prey is because I'm up to 60. If you did this at like level 50, they might aggro you. Anyway, yeah, it's the north northwest corner here. Just make your way up the stairs. There's also another book here if you need to reinstate, uh, re get your invis and sneak back. I couldn't find the word. So from here, you gotta run across to the staircase over on the east side, which should be on the 8th floor. We have to go to the ninth floor, and then we gotta come back down to the 8th floor, and then back to the ninth and the 10th. So I'll see you in one second. Alrighty, so now we are at the stairs that we came up in the northeast corner on floor 8. We have to make our way down to the southeast corner over here to the stairs and head down those. But be careful of this middle room here, there's a hole in the middle of it. So if you fall down that, you will not be at the same spot. I'll show you what I mean. There's a, there's a hole in this room. Apparently I can't find it. I think it's in the middle there. I think it might be one of those illusion uh, floor holes. Where if you run over top of it, you'll fall down, but it's not actually visible. Anywho, just run down these stairs. They'll bring you back to the 8th floor. Which is how we get back to the 10th floor after, after the 9th floor. So, just run down these. Seemingly a little bit longer, uh stairs and then all you do is you just run across here make sure you don't fall down if there's a hole in that next room and then go up the stairs and you'll be back on the ninth floor there's a hole that's, that's what i was talking about so just make sure you don't fall down these holes so if you fall down the hole you will not be where you're supposed to be and you'll have to come back up so we're almost to the staircase But, I don't know if you noticed, I've been checking pretty much everything I come across to make sure it's not uh, easy prey or higher. Just in case my sneak and invis were off. So now we're back on the ninth floor. And now, I think we just go straight to the north. Yeah, we go to that teleporter to the northwest. And then that should bring us to the tenth floor. And then I will see you in one second. Alrighty, so we are on the 10th floor now. If you head over to this little wide looking shape, right before this gigantic room here with a dildo on the bottom, um, there should be a dude outside that you have to kill, and he should give you a key item, I think, that opens the door. And uh, yeah, we'll go and squish him real quick. Uh, you guys easy brain? No. Okay. So at level 60, you don't have to worry about anything, maybe then other than an M on the way up. That would aggro you, and then just beat the crap out of this guy real quick. At the 60 monk, he should be pretty much nothing. Oh, I mean, he hurts a little bit. But, just beat him up. This will just take a second. Also, he uses uh, 100 fists, so be very careful with that. As you can see, he's beating me up now. But, he's dead. Oh, I actually thought I had to kill him. I guess I just had to open the door. Anyway, there's this guy in here that you have to kill. He shouldn't be so hard. Should probably be easier. Let's see how difficult you are. Hey, come back here. I ain't done with you. Yeah, okay, so he's pretty much the same toughness. But, good thing for me, I can do this. And I should pretty much obliterate his HP right here. Goodbye. Yep, there you go. So if you're in a group of six people, as long as you all are in the same zone, then you can all get the key uh, from this guy. 
Otherwise, however many people you have, have will get the key. If you're in an alliance, obviously you won't get the key. So then you just trade it to this. I don't know why that thing's following me around. Trade the key to this elevator. You should get the key item, I think, when you go down to the basement. And uh, that should pretty much finish the quest, or the mission. But we'll see in one second, once I get all the way to the bottom. Whee! Uh, yep. You got the key item. Now you gotta run all the way down these stairs, so I'll see you in about five years. So after you run down the stairs and exit the door at the bottom, which would be to the east, come out of the door, which would be here, and then just run southeast of the door to this little room. If you have the map, it'll be easy to find. Um, you click on this, and you should get a cutscene with the uh, ambassador guy, or girl, or whoever it is. Should, should get a cutscene. Oh, there we go. Altair. Altair. I don't know how to pronounce it. I mess up lots of names. You talk to him, and then all you gotta do is go back to the embassy in Juno, and that should finish the mission for you. Pretty quick. Um, I'll also show you a quick thing really quick. So, this door that I'll run back to, the one at the bottom of the elevator thing, if I'm not mistaken, which I don't think I am, you could come down here and end up getting killed here if you don't feel like running all the way up the stairs for some reason. As long as you have somebody on the inside, they could use Tractor to bring you through the door. As I think it's Black Mage, I don't know the level of the spell. And they can bring you through the door, and then either they can raise you or somebody else in a group can raise you. That way you don't have to run all the way up there. Then you just have to go through the door. Obviously you'd be dead, so you'd be tractored through. Then you run up the stairs until you get to the very top. And then they kill the uh, dude who drops the six keys. And then you have to run all the way back down. And trade it to the... Uh, I think you either trade it to the elevator in there, or you trade it to that door we just came from where we got the cutscene with Altair. And yeah, you should get the key item and finish the mission a lot easier. Anyway, see you in a sec once we get back to Juno. Alright, we are back in Juno at the um, Master place, uh, Bastokian Embassy. Talk to this Goggin person again. And find out where his office is. This one? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, okay. So you talk to Goggin and then you go through the door to the left of him. And you'll get a cutscene with the ambassador guy. And once you talk to this guy, you should get to rank 4. And you should get, I think, 5,000 gold. Yep, there's rank 4. And I think he hands you 5k, 5K gold, too. I could be mistaken. Nope, you get 5,000 gold. Nice. So, next episode we'll start uh, Magisite so that we can do the Limit Break quest. And then we'll also finish Magicite and the Limit Break next episode. And if I can squeeze it in, I will also get uh, 65 Monk as well. And I will have to see what I need to do for the next Limit Break after that. But we're getting close to where we have to fight Matt. That should be pretty easy now that you can use Alter Egos. Or whatever you want to call them. They trust people. So, yeah. Be pretty easy. We'll enter all the little kind of tank everything. Alipot should pretty much keep them up for a while. And I'll just beat the crap out of them with 100 fists. And use uh, either Howling Fist or I think that one's Raging Fist. Yeah. Probably use Howling Fist. It seems to do more. Anyway. If you enjoyed the episode... Please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and drop a comment what your favorite part of uh, my series for Final Fantasy XI has been so far. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Peace!